Welcome back again guys sa ating second video ng ating Law and Business Organization series. Ang pag-aaralan natin ngayon ay tungkol sa capital structure of corporations based from the RA 11232 or the Revised Corporation Code of the Philippines. Okay, so before tayo mag-start, please subscribe to our channel, like the video, and comment your uh, suggestions and reactions. Okay? Also, gagawa tayo ng premium version ng video na ito very soon. So, this will include the law and corporations, cooperatives, SRC, corporate governance, and the partnership laws. Okay, so before we get started, tignan muna natin yung learning outcomes based from the SIPALI syllabus. So, letter A, number and qualifications of incorporators. Letter B, the subscription requirements of corporations. Letter C, we have the corporate terms. And letter D, the different classifications, uh, classification of shares. Okay, uh, with a special emphasis on uh, preferred shares, mga common shares. And then, yung mga voting rights sa mga different shares na to, ganun din yung mga founder shares, redeemable shares, and treasury shares. Okay? So, let's have a brief overview muna of the capital structure of a corporation. Okay? So, imagine this um, line and yung bilog, ito yung birth of the corporation or the point where uh, maa-acquire ng ating corporation yung kanyang tinatawag na separate juridical personality or legal personality. Okay? So, this is actually the date or point of incorporation. Okay? Pero, um, even before incorporation, may mga ginagawa na tayo. So, those are called, or those are called the pre-incorporation activities. At mga ilan-ilan dyan ay itong mga to. Okay? Number one, uh, pagdedetermine ng capital structure ng isang corporation, and mga tinatawag nating pre-incorporation subscriptions na usually ginagawa ng mga uh, promoters. Okay? And then, nandyan din yung preparation of the articles of incorporation and the preparation of bylaws, which is actually hindi required yung preparation of bylaws. Okay? So, ang magiging topic natin uh, in this video will be the capital structure broken down into these uh, different topics. Incorporators, actually the numbers and qualifications, and we also have the ano, subscription requirements, the corporate term, and the different classes, which is nabanggit natin kanina sa learning outcomes. Okay? And ang susunod nating topic after ng capital structure, kasi magkadugtong actually ito, is the ano, um, pagdating na sa actual incorporation natin. Okay? Incorporation and organization. At kung makapansin nyo, um, yung preparation of articles of incorporation, yung mapeprepare po natin na uh, AOI will be submitted to the SEC okay para yun nga si SEC siya ang magserve as a vehicle for incorp may incorporate natin yung corporation at kung mapapansin niyo naman under the bylaws uh, mapapansin niyo na yung ating linya dito ay dash lines lang meaning uh, ang bylaws po kasi yung preparation ng bylaws prior to incorporation ay hindi po required so ang pinaka required lang dito is yung AOI or the articles of incorporation okay so, during incorporation or pagdating sa topic ng incorporation and organization, we will have this following topics, okay? Mga pre-incorporation activities such as this aside from the capital structure, syempre, which is discuss in this video. And we also have the different components of a corporation. We also have pre-incorporation subscription agreements and the different contents of the articles of incorporation and the bylaws okay pero for now focus muna tayo dito okay focus muna tayo sa mga to okay so let's get started okay so first topic we have the number and qualifications of incorporators so under uh, section 10 of the revised corporation code these are the different qualifications of incorporators dati for example, sa una na nakalista dito is nakalagay ngayon, pwede na ang natural, pwede na rin ang artificial person. Kung maalala nyo sa mga nakabasa dati ng ano, old corporation code, ang required lang dati ay, or ang pwede lang dati ay natural person lang. Okay? So, what do we mean by natural and artificial? Pag natural, yung totoong tao. Okay? Pag artificial naman, pwedeng maging business. Okay? Such as mga sole proprietorships, mga partnerships, and other corporations. Okay? 
So, yan po ang ating requirement number 1. Pagdating naman sa requirement number 2, not more than 15. Dati-rati kasi sa ating old corporation code, 5 to 15. Pero ngayon, uh, inaalaw na ang less than 5 dahil yun nga, pagdating sa RCC, dyan na rin papasok yung konsepto ng tinatawag nating OPC or One Person Corporation. Okay? Pero tatnandan nyo, hindi pa rin naalis yung uh, maximum na 15. Okay? Pero later on, once na nag-aral na tayo ng non-stock corporation, uh, mapag-aaralan natin na magkaiba ang requirement when it comes to uh, stock corporation and non-stock. Pag non-stock kasi, pwedeng lumampas dyan sa 15 actually. Okay? Next, cannot organize corporations for practice of profession. Okay? So, dati-rati, ganito na rin sa old corporation code, which is hindi naman nabago ngayon pagdating sa revised corporation code. Hanggang general professional partnership pa rin ang ating mga okay, mga organizations uh, for the practice of profession. For example, yung mga auditing firms natin, yung mga engineering firm, mga law firm, or any other firm, basta ang concept niya ay para i-practice yung inyong profession. Hanggang partnership lang po, hanggang general professional partnership lang po ang pwedeng uh, ma-organize okay, for that purpose. Hindi po pwede ang corporation. Next, if Okay, the incorporator is a natural person, meaning totoong tao, dapat of legal age siya. So, 18 and above. Okay? And lastly, okay, he or she must be a holder or subscriber of at least one stock, okay, at the time na may incorporate yung ating corporation. Okay? So, mapag-aaralan natin din uh, later on yung pagkakaiba ng incorporators at corporators. Okay? Pagdating sa incorporation and organization. So, tatandaan nyo, itong last, ano natin, itong last requisite natin dito or qualification, ito po ay required lang habang ini-incorporate ang ating, uh, tawag dito, ang ating corporation. Pero once na na-incorporate na siya, pwedeng yung incorporator na yun, specific incorporator na yun, ibenta niya lahat ng kanyang stocks. Okay? At once na nabenta niya yung kanyang mga stocks, mawawala na ba siya as an incorporator? The answer is no. Mananatili pa rin siya as an incorporator. Okay? Next, punta naman tayo sa minimum subscription or mga subscription requirements when it comes to the organization of corporations. So, kailangan ba ng minimum capital or authorized capital or whatsoever mga minimum subscription? Dati-rati, may mga rules tayo wherein um, hindi dapat bababa ang ating uh, minimum paid up capital sa 5,000. Parang ganun, di ba? Tapos, Yung 5,000 na yun, parang kumbaga 25% o at least 25% na subscribe dun, uh, nabayaran, paid up dun sa subscribe. And another 25% ulit, dapat 25% ng authorized na subscribe. Okay, so yun yung ano, mas kilala sa tinatawag natin ano yung 25%, 25% and 5,000 rule. Pero actually wala na po yun sa RCC dahil tinanggal na. Okay, so sabi dito, initial subscription requirements were removed in the revised corporation code. Okay. And based naman sa section 12 ng RCC, stock corporations shall not be required to have a minimum capital stock. Okay? So wala pong requirement except otherwise, okay, malaking except. Except as otherwise, especially provided by special law. Okay. So bigyan ko kayo ng example ng mga exemption na 'yan. Okay. So for example, ganito. Sabi natin, walang minimum capital when it comes to the organization of corporation. However, there are certain industries na kailangan ng capital. Okay, for example, kapag gusto mong mag-set up ng mining company, okay, under special laws, ang kailangan na authorized capital stock diyan ay 100 million so malaki-laki at ang paid up ay 6,250,000, okay? Another example, um, kapag gusto mong magpatayo ng elementary school or let's say mga secondary tertiary school, okay, kailangan mo ng uh, mga corresponding amounts na ito, 1 million, 2 million, 500,000, and 5 million, okay? Okay, basta tatanda nyo, wala po tayong minimum, okay? Minimum subscription requirement, wala tayong minimum capital requirement, okay? Pero kapag yung gusto mong corporation na ipatayo ay pasok sa mga industries, actually magbibigay tayo ng link ng pinagkuhanan ko nito, okay? Sa baba, okay? Kapag pasok yan sa mga industries, okay, na nakalista doon, ayan, meron tayong mga minimum capital stock, okay? Or capital requirement, kumbaga, Okay? So, next topic tayo, we have the corporate term. 
under the old code, ang ating corporate term ay pag general rule ang pinag-uusapan or kapag silent si problem or kung ano man ang sinasagutan niya dyan tungkol sa corporation, we have 50 years. Okay? Pero sa RCC section 11 paragraph 1, okay, um, meron na pong perpetual existence, meaning pag perpetual existence, uh, dire-diretso mag-i-exist yung corporation po natin. Okay? Unless, its articles of incorporations provide otherwise. Ibig sabihin, mag-set tayo ng, uh, tawag dito, ng actual, okay? Ng actual number of years na mabubuhay lang yung corporation. Okay? So, moving for forward, corporate term pa rin tayo. Okay? Paano naman yung mga corporations na nag-exist na before, okay? Before maging effective yung ating revised corporation code. So, sabi dito sa paragraph 2 ng ating section 11, Corporations with certificates of incorporation issued prior to the effectivity of this code and which continue to exist shall have perpetual existence unless, okay, perpetual existence pa rin po. Pero unless, sabi niya dito, unless upon a vote of its stockholders representing majority of its outstanding capital stock uh, notifies the commission. Okay, every time we refer to the commission, we re refer to the SEC. Tatandaan niyo po yan, okay? So, ninotify po nila yung SEC that it elects to retain its specific corporate term nung dati na bago maging, ano, maging effective tong revised corporation code po natin. Okay? So, kung ang nakalagay dati sa kanilang AOI ay uh, 50 years, so susundan natin yung 50 years. Okay? Again, provided okay, that any change in the corporate term under this section is without prejudice to the appraisal right of dissenting stockholders. So, By the way, when it comes to appraisal right, pag-aaralan na pa natin yan later on sa mga susunod nating mga lectures. Okay? So next, okay. When it comes to the ano, extension and shortening of term, uh, medyo may konting pagbabago lang tayo from the previous code. So dati sa previous code, ang naalala ko 5 years. Okay, pero ngayon, 3 years yung nandito. So ano yung 3 years na yan? Sabi dito, pwede nating ma-extend or ma-shorten ang ating Art, uh, corporate term under sa ating articles of incorporation if hindi natin pinili yung perpetual existence. Siyempre, pag perpetual existence, hindi na natin yung ma-extend, hindi rin natin yung ma-shorten dahil yun nga, infinity, parang ganun, di ba? Okay, so sabi dito, provided that no extension may be made earlier than 3 years prior to the original or subsequent expiry dates unless there are justifiable reasons. So, pwede kang Uh, magpa-extend lang okay um, not, okay, kumbaga hindi siya pwedeng gawin earlier 3 years prior to the original expiry date, so meron tayong ano diyan, um, uh, tawag dito illustration maya maya so tapusin lang nating basahin provided further that such extension of the corporate term shall take effect only on the day following the original or subsequent event, so yung last sen sentence po natin ay Um, nagre-refer po siya in the instance wherein uh, meron tayong justifiable reason for earlier extension or for for early extension. Okay? So, i-illustrate po natin yung extension. Okay? So, for example, this is the life of the corporation. Okay? Hanggang dito lang siya. For example, January 31, 2030. Okay? Kailan po natin siya pwedeng i-extend? Okay? So, ito yung 3 years prior. So, Um, January 31, okay, lahat ng dates before January 31, 2027, hindi po natin pwedeng i-extend ang ating, uh, ang life or corporate term ng ating corporation without justifiable reason. Okay? Ito yung, uh, ito yung mga dates na pwede nating i-extend even without, uh, even without giving a justifiable reason. Okay, kasi ito yung uh, ito yung dates allowed by the corporation code, okay? So from January 31 uh, onwards, okay? So doon doon natin siya pwedeng i-extend, okay? Pero uh, dates before January 31, 2020 uh, 2027, hindi po natin siya pwedeng ma-extend without justifiable reasons. Okay, tatandaan niyo po 'yan. Okay, next. Okay, how about when a corporation yung term ng corporation ay nag-expired, automatically liquidated, dissolved ba siya and liquidated? The answer is no. 
Okay? Pwede pa rin siyang mag-apply for revival of its corporate existence together with all the rights, privileges under its certificate of incorporation and subject to all its duties, debts, and liabilities existing prior to, to its revival. Upon approval by the commission, the corporation shall be deemed revived and a certificate of revival of corporate existence shall be issued giving it perpetual existence unless okay, mag-apply tayo for a specific term ng corporation natin. Okay? Okay. So, in terms of yung nabanggit natin kanina, yung sa revival, sabi dito, no application for revival of incorporation of the following shall be approved unless accompanied by uh, re uh, favorable recommendation by the appropriate government agency. So, ito yung mga yon. Itong mga uh, uri ng mga corporation na ito or mga corporations under these industries, hindi po pwedeng basta-basta mag-issue or mag-apply for revival without the okay, favorable recommendation of the appropriate uh, tawag dito, government agency. Okay? So, pakimemorize po yung mga yan. Very important yan at uh, madalas matanong din, mat natatanong din yan sa mga exams and quizzes. Okay. So next, punta naman na tayo sa ating last topic or last subtopic for today. We have the different classifications of shares. So naalala natin last time, di ba? Um, the different or parang kumbaga major classes of corporation will be, ano, under the RCC will be, ano, uh, divided into these two, the stock and non-stock corporations. Okay, so under stock corporations na kalagay dito, pwede natin siyang i-issue with par value or no par value pero uh, mamaya-maya natin ano, um, itatopic yan in detail. Okay? So, punta tayo sa mga different classifications of shares. So, commonly, we uh, we know that these uh, types of shares exist dahil napag-aaralan natin to bukod sa law, uh, napag-aaralan natin to sa ating mga financial uh, accounting subjects, sa ating basic accounting sub subject, the law uh, para kumbaga accounting for partnership and corporations okay yung mga ganong subject so naridig na natin yung common shares and uh, preferred shares another uh, classification na pwede nating gawin is yung tinatawag nating pwede natin siyang maklasify into voting shares and non-voting shares at uh, in relation dun sa naunang classification na binanggit natin generally voting shares yung mga common shares and non-voting naman yung mga preferred shares Okay? And kanina, nabanggit din natin itong concept na to yung par value shares and no par value shares. So, whether common or preferred shares, pwede natin siyang uh, ma-issue with par value or no par value shares. Another classification na pwede natin ma-ilagay dito is yung mga different shares that are not commonly ano, uh, issued. For example, mga founder shares, mga redeemable shares, and ito naman, treasure share. Actually, dating mga ganitong klaseng share siya. Okay? For example, common share and preferred share. Eh, pero ang ginawa lang natin is, di ba, binay back natin yung share na yan. Okay? And actually, there are other types of, tawag dito, mga, mga shares pa. Kaso, hindi lahat po yan ay... Um, i-discuss pa natin. We will have special em emphasis on the following, okay? On this, okay? These types or classifications classification of shares, okay? So, next, okay. Um, okay, before we move on to the, ano, uh, common stock and, or common share or ordinary share and the preferred share, Basahin mo natin itong ano, rule under the different classification of shares under section 6, paragraph 2 ng revised code. The share stock, okay, the share of stock of corporations may be divided into classes or series of shares or both, okay? No share may be deprived of voting rights except those classified and issued as preferred Okay, so markaan lang natin dito, preferred or redeemable shares. Okay, so sabi lang pala dito sa ating batas, pwedeng i-deprive. Ibig sabihin, may mga instances na itong mga preferred shares or redeemable shares, hindi po natin i-deprive from vote. Ibig sabihin natin yung ano, uh, pwedeng maging voting share pa rin itong mga preferred or redeemable as long as, di ba, hindi natin siya deprive. Okay, pero later on, makikita natin na may mga certain instances na kahit 
dineprive natin itong preferred share or redeemable share. Okay, may mga instances pa rin na pwedeng maging pwedeng bumoto yung mga specific shares na yan, okay? Sabi dito, unless otherwise provided in this code, provided that there shall be a class or series series of shares with complete voting rights. Okay? So hindi pwedeng ano, hindi hindi tayo pwedeng bumuo ng corporation na nag-iissue lang ng let's say preferred share na walang voting right. Hindi po pwede 'yon. Okay? Dapat merong at least isang type of share or class of share na merong complete voting rights po. Okay? Kasi syempre, 'yun nang gagamitin sa pag-elect ng Uh, directors, yun ang, ah, di ba? Yun ang gagamitin para uh, mag-ratify ng mga certain corporate acts and etc. etc. Okay? So, next. Okay, so, ayan. Uh, what is the difference between uh, preferred shares and common shares? So, sabi dito, preferred shares may be deprived of voting rights. Okay? So, nabanggit na yan kanina. Okay, however, corporations usually give holders of prefer sh preferred shares certain benefits or preference not enjoyed by common shareholders at ano tong mga to ito yung mga to okay for example preference sa dividend distribution okay uh, in terms of distribution mas nauunang din i-distributan si preference share actually not necessarily nauuna naman pero in terms of computation yun yung ginagawa natin okay And also, pwede rin nating ma-classify yung preferred share na yan as participating. Meaning, di ba, nag-compute na tayo ng para sa preferred share, tapos nag-compute din tayo ng para sa common share, and later on, makikihati ulit si preferred share doon sa uh, tinatawag nating residual, okay, or yung parang matitira, okay, doon sa income or doon sa dinistribute as dividends, okay, or dineclare na dividends, okay? And also, when it comes to distribution of corporate asset in case of liquidation pag uh, di ba eventually uh, nag-dissolve yung corporation and nag-liquidate siya in terms of pagdi-distribute po natin ng mga assets after mabayaran yung mga creditors mas nauuna pong bigyan yung mga preferred shareholders okay kaysa sa mga common stockholders okay pero tatanda natin provided that preferred shares are issued with par value so matatamasa lang na natong mga benefit na to Okay, under the corporation code, only if they are issued with par value. Okay, kasi kung in-issue sila without par value, mukhang hindi. Hindi, hindi, hindi nila pwedeng makamit itong mga uh, specific benefits na ito. Okay? So, next. Okay, ito yung sinasabi natin kanina. Inuulit ko, ang preferred shares po ay generally non-voting shares. Okay? Generally non-voting shares. Pero hindi naman ibig sabihin na... Uh, hindi na pwedeng maging voting okay? pero ibang topic actually yun ito, kahit na non-voting yung preferred share ito yung mga instances na pwede pa rin siyang bumoto so ito, i-memorize na lang natin ang mga yan dahil later on pagdating natin sa mga corporate powers and uh, different corporate acts and activities okay? mapag-aaralan din po natin itong mga to okay? so for now, paki-memorize yung mga yan So, inulit ko, ang preferred shares po pwede maging voting and non-voting shares. Okay? Pero generally, non-voting shares siya. Pero kahit na non-voting shares siya, may mga instances pa rin na pwede siyang bumoto. Okay? Next, how about this? Okay, so the shares or series of shares may or may not have par value. Okay, so ito naman, usapang, usaping ano, uh, par value and no par value. Okay. So, sabi nga natin kanina, ang corporations po ay allowed, okay? Any corporations are allowed generally, di ba, to issue uh, shares with par value or no par value. However, there are certain exemptions, okay, such as mga banks, trustees, insurance, pre-need, public utilities, um, building and loan associations, and any corporations authorized to obtain or access funds from the public, whether uh, publicly or publicly listed or not. Okay, so yung mga yan, um, hindi po sila pwedeng mag-issue ng no par value shares. Okay, inulit ko, hindi po sila pwedeng mag-issue ng mga shares na walang par value. Laging merong par value dapat. Okay? So next, share of stock issued without par value shall be deemed fully paid and non-accessible. And the holder of shares, of such shares, 
shall not be liable to the corporation or to its creditors in respect thereto. Okay? So, ang sabi lang dito, deem fully paid. So, usually, pag no par value shares, binabayaran natin yan kaagad. Okay? Kasi, sabi nga dito, kapag hindi mo yan pinabayaran kaagad, okay? ang assumption, nabayaran na lahat. Okay? Sabi kasi dito, di ba? And, hindi na magiging liable. Okay? Siyempre, initially, yan ang magiging case. Pero, siyempre, kapag meron tayong evidence to the contrary, pwede nating ma-contest yun. Okay? Pero, yun nga, para maging safe, okay, tignan natin to. O, parang kumbaga, sundan natin yung practice wherein kapag no par value share, usually binabayaran siya kaagad. Okay? Dahil kung hindi nga siya nabayaran kaagad, dim fully paid siya actually. Okay? So, sabi dito, provided that no par value shares also must be, ano, only be given, okay, for a minimum of 5 pesos per share. Or, yan, di ba? Can be, only be issued for a minimum consideration of 5 pesos per share. And provided further that the entire consideration received by the corporation for its no par value shares shall be treated as capital and shall not be available for the dividend distribution. Okay, so ano yung ibig sabihin yan? Okay, so puntahan natin to. Okay, so imagine this is the uh, kabuuan ng ating shareholders equity. So, nandyan yung tinatawag nating total contributed capital. And actually, total contributed capital, uh, napapaloob dyan yung ano, lahat ng consideration na ibinayad natin sa issuance ng share. So, for example, yung meron tayong 100,000 diba, na authorized capital stock, binenta natin yung, let's say, kalahati, 50,000. Um, kung naibenta natin yun at 10 pesos per ano, di ba? 10 pesos per share, so 50,000 times 10. So, meron tayong 500,000 total contributed capital. Pero, syempre, alam ko alam nyo yan dahil napag-aralan natin yan sa mga uh, other accounting subjects. Okay? So, under total contributed capital, syempre, napapaloob dyan yung authorized capital. Okay? So, authorized capital ang gagamitin natin actually dahil we are uh, first, we are illustrating what we call uh, kapag nag-issue tayo, let's say, purely ng par value shares. Okay? So, inulit ko itong diagram na to ay ang assumption po natin, nag-issue tayo purely ng par value shares. So, kung makikita nyo, may konting nakalabas dun sa authorized capital natin na konti, di ba? Okay, may konting nakalabas. Okay, so that represents actually the unissued portion of the authorized capital. Okay, and also we have, okay, uh, uh, may mga portion ng authorized capital na sinubscribe pero hindi pa nababayaran. Okay, so nandyan siya. Okay, sinubscribe pero hindi siya nababayaran, hindi pa nababayaran. Okay, and also we have the concept of treasury shares na Uh, red siya to indicate na bawas siya, kabawasan, okay, sa ating outstanding capital stock. Okay, so, uh, ang tanong dito actually is, ang significance ng pagkakaroon ng par value and no par value share ay, okay, yung pagdetermine ng tinatawag nating legal capital. Okay, pag sinabi kasi nating legal capital, okay, yun yung portion ng ating shareholders equity na hindi po natin pwedeng, okay, never, okay, never. In no case na pwede natin siyang i-declare as dividend dahil kung yun nga ang nangyari, okay, we will be violating the what we call trust fund doctrine, okay? Okay, so actually this is the legal capital when it comes to the, um, what do you call this, uh, pag i ng mga shares with par value, okay? So that is the legal capital, okay? So let's assume, di ba? Let's assume meron tayong 100,000 shares na authorized which has a par value of 10 pesos per share, okay? And let's assume, syempre, not necessarily, hindi na, uh, not necessarily binibenta natin siya at 10 pesos lang, di ba? Syempre, pwede natin siyang ibenta more than par, okay? At kapag binenta natin siya more than par, yung uh, humigit doon sa par na yun is what we call the additional paid-in capital, okay? Or the share premium, okay? So, yan yung authorized capital, 1 million, okay? And let's assume that 90,000 of these shares are actually issued. Okay, so let's say na issue siya at 25 para to make the ano to make the problem simple. Okay, so yun po yung total contributed capital natin. So two two fifty two million two hundred fifty thousand. That is the total contributed capital. So the question now is how much is the authorized or the legal capital this time? Okay, so actually the legal capital is. 900,000. So, paano natin na-compute yung 900,000? Actually, walang masyadong connection yung 
pag illustrate natin ng uh, total contributed capital and then the what we call this the total authorized capital. So simple lang yung 900,000 pinrorate lang po natin siya from the par value ng mga shares na na-issue na. Uh, pag binalikan natin kasi, di ba? Ilan ba ang na-issue na? Out of the 100,000, ang na-issue po ay 90,000 shares. Issued at 25 pesos per share. Okay? So, ayan. So, pakibalikan na lang ang ating accounting if uh, you find this uh, illustration medyo confusing. Okay? So, how about when we issue no par value shares? So, ganito po yung magiging itsura niyan. So, we have pares pa rin, shareholders equity. We also have the what we call total contributed capital. However, we will be using the term stated capital rather than the uh, term authorized capital. Okay? Okay. So, gaya ng ano, kanina ng illustration, meron din tayong mga subscribe capital dyan. Okay? And treasure share. Okay, pero ang tanong, saan ang portion dyan or anong portion dyan ang considered legal capital? So, under the section na nabanggit natin kanina, this is the uh, what we will be considered uh, as legal capital. Yung total contributed capital or yung buong consideration na tatanggap natin from the sale of such uh, shares na walang par value. Okay? So, uh, gaya pa rin ng kanina, let's say meron tayong 100,000 shares. Let's say ang ating stated value, okay? So, hindi natin ginamit yung term na par value. Meron tayong stated value pa rin. Nagkakaroon pa rin tayo ng stated value, 10 pesos for example. So, that is the total stated capital, 1, uh, 1 million pa rin. Okay. Let's say 90,000 of these shares or uh, diba, yung kabuuan ng shares ay nabenta ulit at 25. So, that will be the total contributed capital. Okay. So, ang tanong, how much is the legal capital? Okay. So, iba na. Siyempre, mas malaki na siya this time. So, our answer will be, the 2,250,000 na total consideration na na-receive natin for those 90,000 shares. Okay? So, sana simple enough. Okay? Para maintindihan nyo yung concept ng uh, legal capital when it comes to par value shares and no par value shares. Okay? So, next. Punta naman tayo sa concept ng tinatawag nating founder shares. Okay? So, this is based from the section 7 of the Re revised corporation code. So, founder shares may be given certain rights and privileges not enjoyed by the owners of stock. Usually, yung founder share po, binibigay po yan sa mga ating mga incorporators or kung sino man yung naging founder ng ating corporation. Okay? Oh, okay. So, sabi niya, may mga certain rights and privileges na yung mga, yung mga founder shares na yan. Okay? What if yung ating founder share ay merong ganitong klaseng right? So, sabi dito, where the exclusive right to vote and be voted in the election of the directors is granted, it must be for a limited period not to exceed 5 years from the date of incorporation. Kasi isipin nyo, ba? Kapag meron tayong exclusive right na maiboto as a director or bumoto, ba? Ng director, ibig sabihin, ibig sabihin, sure na pwede nating maiset yung sarili natin as director ng corporation. Siyempre, yung ganong klaseng medyo imbalance na right or medyo grabbing right, di ba? Uh, napakalaking benefit na right is dapat meron siyang limitation para hindi maging ano, masyadong imbalance, di ba? Yung power na yan, okay? So, ang sinet po nating ano, limitation ay hindi siya pwedeng mag-exit ng 5 years, okay? So, for 5 years, pwede mong ma-enjoy ang benefit na yan. Pero once na, o, oh, naging 5 years na, or, di ba, nag na yung 5 years, hindi na pwede. Wala na yung ganyang klaseng right. Okay? Pero any other rights that will be, ano, ibibigay sa mga founder shares ay wala naman tayong nilagay na limitation. Ito lang yung nilagay natin na, nilagyan natin ng limitation, itong specific uh, right and privilege na ito. Okay? So, sabi dito, provided that such exclusive right shall not be allowed if its exercise will violate these different laws. Okay? So, pakitandaan na lang yung mga different laws na yan, pero not necessarily na... Uh, aalamin nyo pa kung ano bang ibig sabihin ng mga yan, okay? So, outside the topic na po yung mga yan uh, under Revised Corporation Code. Pero, if you are, ano, curious, pwede nyo i-search po siya sa Google. Okay? So, next, we have the redeemable shares naman. What are redeemable shares? So, malamang-lamang na pag-aralan nyo na rin to sa inyong mga accounting subjects under corporations, okay? So, ito yung mga shares na pwedeng ma-redeem in the future. Okay? Merong redemption date, Merong tinatawag nating uh, redemption price din. 
di ba? Okay. So, this may be issued by the corporation when expressly provided in the Articles of Incorporation. So, kapag hindi nakalista itong specific share na to, hindi natin siya pwedeng i-issue. Okay. So, ang gawin na lang natin, ilista natin siya sa Articles of Incorporation later on. Okay. At once na in-approve siya ng SECO, that's the time pwede na tayo makapag-issue uh, ng redeemable shares. So, they are shares which may be purchased by the corporation. Okay. Um, they are shares which may be purchased by the corporation from the holders of such shares upon the expiration of a fixed period, okay, regardless of the existence of unrestricted retained earnings in the books of the corporation and upon such other terms and conditions stated in the Articles of Incorporation and the Certificate of Stock representing the shares subject to the rules and regulations issued by the Commission. So, Uh, kung maalala nyo, um, ang nagiging treatment din natin sa redeemable share ay actually hindi po siya nagiging equity. Hindi po siya equity in some certain instances wherein, for example, number one, meron tayong mandatory redemption period. Ibig sabihin, kailangan talagang i-purchase nung uh, tawag dito, uh, corporation kasi mandatory. Parang kumbaga wala sa option ng corporation na tanggihan na i-buy back yung share na to. So, parang kumbaga, in substance, parang liability ito ng corporation. So, parang kumbaga, hindi natin siya nilalagay sa equity portion. Nilalagay po natin siya sa liability uh, portion dahil yun nga, mandatory yung redemption. Okay? Specific redemption price and specific period beyond the control of the corporation. Okay? So, yun po yung redeem redeemable share. Pero, syempre, pinaka i-emphasize natin dito, ito regardless of the existence of unrestricted retain, retain earnings, okay? So, it doesn't matter, okay, kung meron tayong balance sa ating unrestricted retain earnings or kung sapat pa ba ito, okay? So, malaking pagkakaiba po yan when it comes to the purchase of treasury shares. Okay, so treasury shares naman, we have, okay, These are shares of stock which have been issued in fully paid for but subsequently reacquired by the issuing corporation through purchase, redemption, donation, or some other lawful means. Okay, such shares may be uh, uh, disposed of for a reasonable price. Okay, fixed by the board of directors. Okay, so this is based from section 9 of the revised corporation code. Okay, so ano bang ibig sabihin nito? Okay. Pag mga treasury shares po kasi, yan yung mga ano, dati nang na-issue na share, okay, pero for some certain uh, purposes or instances, biglang, di ba, binabayback, okay, ng corporation. Okay, ang pagkakaiba po ng treasury share when it comes to reacquisition naman from uh, the redeemable share ay yung, okay, yung tawag dito, existence ng ating retained earnings, okay. Under redeemable shares, it doesn't matter kung meron pang unappropriated retain earnings. Pero when it comes to treasury share, it's very important na meron tayong uh, unappropriated retain earnings. Otherwise, hindi po natin siya uh, pwedeng ma-buy back. Okay? So, yun po yun. Okay? So, that ends our topic for today, which is the uh, capital structure of corporations. So, next topic will be the what we call the incorporation and organization okay so see you next video okay uh dito tayo magtatapos sa ating lesson for today and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and <clears throat> don't, don't forget na meron din tayong ano premium version ng course na ito which will be released later on so sana uh, at maglalagay tayo actually ng link sa description for more details